Absolutely. Starbot goes to that tech lab here nice and early in this first game. He goes straight to a Banshee. Samaru is just like, I do not want to die to anything. I'm kind of surprised to see that on 2000 Atmospheres. I thought maybe you'll play Banshee on some of the later maps, but I thought for the first map he just opened like 3cc, maybe like Hellion Viking or Hellion Liberator. But no, straight into that Banshee, wants to be safe, can of course pressure from there as well. As it comes in, a Reaper goes down, a couple of Hellions do get pushed away in the end after trading with Lings. But it looks like a couple of drone pulls away into the Spore Crawler, and the first Banshee, at the very least, isn't going to do a whole lot as Rogue does slap down a Spire. This is, uh, where is it? Maybe scouted by the Banshee, maybe the Hellions at the front if they dip into the creep. Yeah, yeah, right that's there. That's pretty dangerous to actually go that far with Hellions. That's probably not going to be scouted. It's a cool position to put it when he's up against the Banshees, right? And obviously what is nice about the Spire here is it's, you're going to be basically on a time with the Banshees. They can't stick around forever. This one might not get a chance to anyway. It just slips out of there. But it does put a timer on. They're not going to look, you know, look forever. They're not going to be able to clean up creep and so on. You're just minimizing the effectiveness that Maru can find from these. He's going to have the Mutas fly across the map, start doing some damage. Actually, might keep them here to help out, but... Eventually, they are going to go across the map and hopefully gain some momentum back on Rogue's side. It's actually a big creep cleanup. Overlord gets taken down as well. Marine stem backwards as the Mutas take care of everything by the looks of it. Of course, with the help of the Lings and the Queens, even a transfuse going down, but Banshee's very well placed to stop any type of run by while Mar was focusing on the front lines. And now the Mutas. Here it is. Mutas now have gotten a little bit of control and they'll always be a threat for Maru. In fact, right now, they're still being a threat not quite enough Marines to chase these down. Yeah, this is actually going to be a little bit brutal. The Widow Mine's going to unburrow on that third base, but Maru needs to start stabilizing. Oh. Oh. This is where the Mutas are just going to get so much done. Those Widow Mines were deadly as well. And not quite for the right player as Combat Shields is finished up. But yeah, you need to get this under control with eight more Mutas on the way. Rogue might just be running away with this. He needs to do serious damage, though. We still talk about upgrades. He still hasn't started his own 1-1. One -one, so he needs to be here doing stuff like this. But he is. I mean, this actually might be very intentional. Maybe not initially. He did plan on starting up that 1-1. One, one. He has with Evolution Chambers, but then saw a moment where he said, hey, this actually isn't going so poorly. Let's continue with this momentum. He certainly doesn't have enough gas to start up upgrades. He puts everything into these Mutas, looking to continue the snowball. Even as he loses drones, he is still piling on the pressure. The Marine count, not stable enough. Yes, they finally have combat shields, but the numbers aren't there. The medevacs really aren't there. And Maru's supply cannot get above 90 as Rogue just sends hordes of lings across the map. Is he actually going to do it with Mutas right here? He really, really is. I mean, that first attack of Maru getting cleaned up and just no stabilizing. I think what you mentioned about delaying those upgrades purposefully, it's, it's masterful from Rogue. He says, look at how much I've done. Look at what I've got. If I just keep spamming units. Yes. These lings are interesting because these first few Marines Okay, they just turned away. It's impeccable how he's managed to completely avoid these Whoa. lings. Like, what? 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 <laughs> okay. Oh my god, that's Finally actually crazy. Season. This is crazy. It's also focused not on what's really important, which is what's more important is that it's not a 2 one, one Guys, there are Marines on the way, but it's a 3 rocks coming out here. So we've seen some experimentation with this. Special actually did it earlier on the season finals. Was able to succeed with the multi-racks opener. I, I am concerned because this amount of Marines is just, what, it's already the 24 Marine camp, which is usually hit with like a third medevac. I think this just overwhelms her. Yeah, this is the trick. It's that if he thought initially up until he saw the actual move out, oh, it's Marine, not Helling, I guess it's 2 on one He's expecting 16 Marines kind of dancing around the edge of creep. Not all these Marines blitzing on top of his Queens, which so far are trying to do their best to survive. But it's going to be eventually a run of transfuses. They're going to get mowed down. Marines simply win against Queens, guys. Not enough Lings to support the Queens. And the Marines are now going to sim again into the drone line. 26 Lings are on the way. And the Marines are starting to get awfully low. The question is, does Rogue also take economic damage on top of the Queen damage? And the answer is not so much. Four drones go down, but in a way, Queens can add to the economy, right? There's not going to be any larva injects, so we might actually have a larva problem, although the drones need to get back to mining. There we go. And uh, we don't have a lot of creep spread. So it still did a lot of damage. It still traded out. It didn't actually get into that mineral line so much. The second pair of medevacs coming along with tanks. Yeah. How does Rogue handle this? Still limited on Larva, now supply blocked, and with no creep spread to help him out on the left side. He's going to go for a massive counterattack. It's his only option. He's basically all in zombie group because he has no lair, so he can't even tech beyond yeah. the 1-1 one, one or anything. So it is a ticking time bomb. Here's this push we talked about before. Tanks on the high ground. They're going to siege that mineral line. 
And now Maru can just slowly pick away the third, and it is down to this counterattack, basically, on the other side of the map. Rogue is starting to move with it, and we'll see how well prepared Maru will be. No bailing speed here, as he does have a few Marines behind the wall. Off. Will this be enough? I mean, it's a lot of bailings, but Rogue has to do serious damage with this. Maru starts pulling back. He might just have to go up into the main base and save whatever Marines he can. He will continue to fight for the moment. He lifts up last second against the Banes, as he will have bailings now crashing in and opening up his main base. Rogue. He actually has a bit of a good plan here. A tank of the high ground actually is helping out. Finally going to get eaten by those Lings. And the Bane Lings finally connect with the rest of the Marines. Some SDDs finally going down as well. But of course, this isn't all that Maru has. He does have yeah. three CC. He's got this gigantic army list out of the map. Now, once again, slaughtering all the Overlords and supply blocking Rogue, who is trying desperately to get another Bane Link count up, but only 10 now on the way. That's still not going to be enough. More Lings going to the main base as Maru holds on to his production. Eventually, he was going to be able to do this, and Rogue is going to try to get some connections. Can't even do that as the four medevacs pick up. They could fly home. That might be the safest option, or they could just continue to run around and kill bases and drones. I think he's got enough at home anyway, right at this stage. And he sees the reinforcements are chasing these units down, so he says, you know, I'll just stick around a little bit. This attack from Rogue was always going to do good damage, but he was always going to take serious damage in the same time, right? So. Definitely works out like that. Maru dropping here. Actually tries to siege this tank up. These Banelings dying on top of the tanks. The tank goes down and Baneling connects. Maru still has a severely overwhelming army supply. If Rogue could just somehow live for a little bit, his work account is in play, but it just ain't gonna matter because these Marines are gonna keep on coming forward. Of course, we still don't have anywhere near Baneling speed being ready. And now I think Maru can fully pay attention to a low Baneling count, target fire them down maybe, or just split backwards either or and he's going to win this game. Yes, indeed. Rogue, as you said, did not really get to play his game last game. And even I would say the first game could have been more capitalizing on something than it was preordained, preplanned for Rogue. Uh, and this third game might be what actually tells us, like, truly is Rogue going to play all-out aggression all the time? Or is, are we actually going to have maybe a bit more of a mid-game scuffle? As I said, the Hellbats, they have to transform, then they have to waddle. And the Queens will buy that time for the Roaches to pop. And an immediate counterattack might also be the play here for Rogue. He's like, oh no, don't kill my Queen. Stop. Yeah. Roaches. This is really bad for Maru because Rogue's going to have a lot of Roach Ling to run across the map with after this. And in theory, Maru can't save all of these units. I mean, never mind just in theory, in actual play, he just can't do it, right? So you're going to lose pretty much everything here. There's already oh, no. Lings in your natural, okay? A couple of Hellions pop out to defend this, but... I mean, I guess the good news is there's a Banshee, right? So we're going to have a Banshee that is going to be able to turn the Roaches around. How much damage do we take before then? Because if he can stabilize a little bit right now, you know, he's got a little worker lead. Obviously, Rogue is at the point where he's starting to drone. Love these Hellbats dropping onto the Lings, and the Roaches see the Banshee, and they're like, nah, -uh, we don't want to be part of this. So actually, not so bad for Maru here. He will still have to start that third CC, so gets that underway now. He's actually going to go for a Hellion drop. If he can just get a couple workers with this Hellion drop, he's going to be in a grand position. Yes, that is true. There's potential there. I'm a little surprised that Rogue didn't go for any amount. He would have lost everything that he had eventually, but if you can bust open the front fast enough... You can still get a lot of STDs, but I think it was also the fact that the wall was finished. Mm -hmm. Nice little engineering bay in the middle helped finish it a little bit faster, and the mass repair would have gone down, so he just cuts his losses and pulls back. Still... Handles the Hellbat build. Yeah, that sounds amazing for the Zerg player, but then you look at the workers, it's even, and it's about to get in favor of Maru as the Hellion drop is going to find a ton of success. Nothing here to help defend. Coming in way too late, and even if the Hellions go down at this point, they're not extremely useful. It does suck a little bit to lose the Medivac, sure, but 11 drones, 12 drones. After I just mentioned they were an even worker count, that's horrific for the Zerg. And Rogue is just once again going to go aggressive. Maru is not being tricked. And Maru, again, even workers with the Zerg. About to change, sure. But he's uh, also been able to retain quite a large army with double upgrades on the way. Feels like Rogue's defense here is going to be very difficult indeed. And I guess it's time to go back into Roaches. It's not like six Muta, seven Muta is going to help you in a direct engagement. Yeah. Not when it's this many Marines. It's funny. Rogue's had to change his plan so many times. Yeah. It's just like he's constantly kind of just shutting himself off, right? And having to just reassess what you're doing all the time it just doesn't work brilliantly i mean i like the road travel just the right idea it's the best idea but will it be enough because again he's changed plans so many times throughout he first he went for the niders now he's got the spider that he's not used either i mean he is just going to be taking this fight he will get this tank he's down on upgrades these marines are going to trade very well on their own 
And you can see this is why Mario can just stick around and fight these roaches. Now he's targeting down Ravages, dodge a couple more vials, and he is just standing here and trading. <laughs> and that is purely 1-1 one, one against 0-0. Zero, zero. Yeah, also unfortunate that Rogue's Roaches came in reinforcing from the left side, not yeah. all together helping with the Queens. I think that also might have just about done it. As far as pushing back this attack, which it finally does get pushed back, not as far as, as winning the game, of course. Rogue is still in a bit of a troublesome spot, never really able to fully execute any one of his plans, but actually dancing around on both of his feet, I guess, you know, on his toes. Like, he's, he's doing a great job of responding to everything that has happened in this game. And I'm, I'm also wondering if he can actually do it successfully getting to this hive. I mean, this seems like one of the most insane things. If I told you that a Zerg player tried to early roach attack, <laughs> failed, then got an ice from, had to cancel it, build a spire, built absolutely no spire units, and decided that a nine-minute hive was the option. I'm pretty sure you'd say that guy's crazy, and it would never work against a guy like Maru. But you know who's really good at executing crazy? Rogue is. So <laughs> if there's one player I would believe in this situation, it has got to be Rogue a little bit. I still feel like when 2-2 kicks in, or even just now, 1-1 one, one against 0-0, zero, zero, fights are going to be great for Maru, and he is just moving around. I love this, just dropping off over here, setting up to hit a base, maybe. I feel like Maru is right to be aggressive, because his trade should just be good, even though usually you don't want to get too aggressive into Roach Ravager. There's just not the right amount of Roach Ravager here at all, and straight in we go, looking for this base. We might just get the hatch and get out of here. He's already unseaging the tanks, and he left a medevac to pick the tanks up. Oh, beautiful. That's, that's sick. That was sick. That was beautiful. Saves everything. Does have to do the awkward evacuation against the oncoming Roach army, but I think he knows that he's okay here. Now, this means that Rogue gains a little bit of control on the other side of the map, something that he's more so thinking about time buying. He needs this hive back to take effect, so Vipers are being made, Lurkers will eventually be made, and that hatch will also come back up, but it, you know, it was a bit of a, another blip in, in Rogue's plan here that apparently he just doesn't care as much as you think about. He's just continuing on with things. Yep, he is about to get the look at Dan finished, so now he can start. Whoa, he goes Adaptive Talons first as well, so he wants to be, like, aggressive with the look, because he knows that like, he's going to have to need the mobility more so than the range. Uh, Maru is literally just stimmed up into the middle of the map, and he is now on the high ground, and Rogue doesn't have anything here, so that's a little bit awkward. And then this Rogue Ravager shows back up. It's still an upgrade lead here for Maru as he's going to kite back from the Biles. He kills the Spire. Not really the most influential thing right now, as we lose a full medevac as well. Uh, huh. But it wasn't kind of, so bad, right? Yeah, it wasn't so bad. It felt like it should have been way worse. And I, I think know. maybe it would have been if he didn't kill the Spire, because he had like 16 Marines not hitting mm -hmm. Roach Ravager. Yeah. Anyway, I mean, still, I mean, I guess you get rid of the Spire and Maru still doesn't lose too much, right? But right. the big thing is you're giving Rogue time and now Lurkers are coming up. It, exactly. Like, ultimately, Rogue's plan here is kind of get enough time to get to these really strong late game units. And the answer seems to kind of be yes. He still has a lot of other problems. He hasn't ever really applied pressure to Maru, who is starting to take his side of the map. And he doesn't have a lot of creep spread to give him advance warning of things like that previous Blitz or this attack, although he seems to be okay. I mean, he's got to take this very carefully. He's got to use these Vipers, right? But Lurkers are on the way. He's close to being maxed out. I think he can again hold, but it's going to be tough. It's all about how the Vipers get their abducts. And there you have it. Three tanks getting abducted, getting a couple shots off, I suppose. But then you scan ahead and see that there are at least a couple of Lurkers still there. You can't actually jump on top of this army. Oh, all the tanks now being taken out. Just two remaining as they reinforce. And Rogue is, is I mean, is he doing this? This is a Good concave from Maru. He jumps on top of the Lurkers, jumps on top of the Ravagers, and suddenly Rogue Supply it plummets, <laughs> and that's actually it. All right, then. Well done, map makers. Well done. Although Maru apparently would not give the same credit. Two Marines force the <laughs> micro back into the SCV line, which they do rather effectively. SCVs are going to lose some of their mining time, but they did a great job as babysitters. Six <laughs> lanes and an overload went down for nothing. Nada. The first drop is about to commence in the main. So obviously now Rogue, you know, he got into the main base. He saw that it was still 1-1-1 to Reactor Factory. knew something was up. Now he goes, oh, okay, a Marine with a Widow Mine drop. Interesting. But then what is the follow-up? Can Rogue even, I guess, a Ling outside the, the front, basically, to see when the move-out happens about the extent of the scouting? Yep, this Widow Mine is going to get burrowed up. Ling's going to start splitting. Oh, my goodness. He wants that Overlord so badly. He drops Marines. He won't get it. Overlord survives. <laughs> <laughs> I would love if this was still a perfect game for Maru. And he got the Overlord too, but he lost a Marine. As well scout from Rogue, he sees a lot of units, so he knows to get into unit production right now, but it's not like he can pre-morph Bailings. No, that's, that's the real terrifying part about this. 
he didn't it's 100 percent know it was two base yes there was nothing with supply depots on the front but that doesn't you know take away from the idea of a third cc on the high ground yep. the baneling nest is going to be in time from the morph banelings but as far as how much creep is there going to be used for those banelings that is the question as the tanks are already here the creeps are going to be cleaned up that base has to be canceled Rogue is trying to come from behind, Should actually, get the it. concave. He's going for it. The tank oh, can't really the help out, mind. but the Widow Vine just obliterated all the lings. There's nothing but queens left over, but at least there's a lot of them. And Maru is going to respect the power of the reinforcements and pull back. Fair play. I, I thought Maru might just keep it going there, and he will get to come in again. Here is a lot of queens. He is moments away from his plus one combat shield. Wow. And now he's going to wait for some reinforcements, I imagine. That Widow Mine was so well played. Maru knew exactly what Rogue wanted to do with it, and he just played around it so well, and then obviously had basically a choke point with his siege tanks. I was surprised Rogue jumped on it without trying to get to Banes, but I guess even if you get to Banes, like tanks target them down. What do you really do there? There's a lot of transfusions available, so Rogue should be able to keep their space alive now. Next tank, Siege and Up. He needs to start getting rid of the Banelings. The first two go down. The rest are stuck behind the Queens. And this means the Marines can just sit here and deal so much damage. And this time, the Marine count will continue through the Queens. And you just cannot transfuse fast enough. And now this fourth base will be forfeit. And Rogue lost a lot of units trying to keep it alive. Yeah, uh, that's the, the real sucker punch, actually, is that if he had abandoned ship and then defended elsewhere, but defend it better, maybe that would have been the better alternative, but losing out in the army fight and losing his hatchery, losing a bunch of queens as well, although he's already replaced quite a few, and he did run away with about five. He is again going to live, but there are those constant trades making it look a bit better for Maru, even though he was dedicated to the two base. The amount of resources that have been lost between the two, especially when it comes to minerals, is pretty insanely in favor of Maru. Just so many lings lost in these defenses, and how many queens? Seven queens. It's a lot of minerals. Just mm -hmm. too few Marines. As long as we're talking about direct engagements, their army versus the other army, then Maru still has the benefit here. So many more units, still has tanks, even adding on some liberators, either to continue anchoring a push or just for harassment, which I'm sure Rogue's also going to have difficulty with, considering how often he has to pull his queen to the front line to even help his defense in the first place. This is already so close to a very important base. Only three banelings going to be target fired. What does connect, wow. though? And we're at the same time, Rogue is going to get a run by into the main base. The lings are the main, banelings are the natural. Decide that they're not actually going to go there. Only a couple of them do as the rest go to the third. Regardless, there's a little bit of a base thread going on as Queens hold the left side. Attacks also on Rogue's new fourth base, but more SCVs are going down. 38 so far as a couple of lings take down the last few. Maro managed to find a base on another great Widowmine shot, but he eventually gets pushed back and the supplies have even evened out. They were going to get to a proper late game. Thinking back to that last Widowmine that just reached, but that one's all right. Oh, oh, the burrow. Oh, Mario just tilts his head as well. I was going to say when the burrow was on the way up, it was like, at that part of the game, it was like Rogue needed to do something. It was like, well, the burrow's a great way because it gives you a chance. Then the run-by went off, and then he has the burrow to just get further ahead from the run-by as well. Does get this base, Mario, so keeping Rogue on only four bases. That's obviously big news as these Lings run on in, though. There's just not enough units back here. Lings going to start getting into the natural. Will it be enough to make a difference? I mean, maybe a couple of SCVs. It's not that bad overall. Maru is dealing with this pretty well. Obviously, just Burrow and Lings in the corner, though, being very annoying with that. We're about to hit that 3-3 set of upgrades, Zombie Grove. Mm -hmm. So we are going to have Maru just trading that little bit better once more as he's yet again trying to reconnect his work accounts with the Mineral Lines. This game has been really scrappy, but the actual supplies, maybe not too uh, you know, amazing or important for, for either player. Rogue has... A, a supply lead, but he's not that far up in workers, still only on four bases trying to get his fifth up and running, but he has made it to lurkers, so he has this tech advantage that's really difficult for Maru to break through. But then Maru does finally have a stable four base economy. We know that he can actually get to the Marauder transition, eventually get to Ghost. Definitely not going to be as fast as some other games he's played versus Zergs, but it feels like after everything is said and done, we got a proper play from both players. And we'll see what this late game works like. I want to say this is where I feel more confident for Maru, but he's been having trouble against the Burrow Bailings and the Ling Runbys. And this few Marines is going to chill on the low ground, get a score crawler. Maybe he opens up further harassment here for a little while. That's nice, Maru. Oh my goodness, man. These lurkers are here, though, and Rogue has just slowly been working his way here, and now there is just no answer to those lurkers. Maru just hasn't had time oh. to prepare for them at all, and. 
third base has to be lifted up, and this is where Rogue is really going to be deadly, I feel like. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Maro's not been able to stop the advance of all these lurkers. That's what's so scary. If they were still on the other side of the map and Maro was trying to drop everywhere, I still feel like he'll be able to recover. But the fact that they're already over here abusing some of these chokes on hardwire as well, that is truly scary. Maru is going to have to have one heck of a concave to actually tackle this or hope that the Widow might get some amazing shots, which uh, so far, a couple of good ones. He's going to take yeah. the fight, but that is so many lurkers in that choke. As I said, Bailey's even oh. coming through. Maru's going to concave, however, and actually jump back on top. He thinks he can actually take this fight at least well enough, or he thinks he has to take this fight. His last stand before the lurkers get on top of more of his economy. He's actually maybe doing it. The Marauders barely waking their way through here as the Marines split just ever so slightly to dodge the spines and apparently Rogue is barely not going to have enough to push on through. Maru taking the supply lead. What a read there for Maru. Like who was looking at him and be like yeah this will work. Honestly, for like the slightest moment, and she has like, well, maybe there's only like lurk, but then the Banes were there, and I was like, no, surely not. Well, this is expensive for Rogue because now he has to rebuild lurkers from zero, but he also needs Banes, he needs Lings, and Maru's coming across the map with a 30 army supply lead. Can you stop Maru right now? It's 3 3 against 2 2 as well. In we go, Lings from the right, Banes from the top. Here comes Maru with extra reinforcements as well. Widow Mines don't do too much just yet, but these body units do not seem to be dying. They're hanging on for a long time, but just too much, Zerg, as Maru will pull back. Off creep reinforcements still showing up. The medevacs need just a chance to heal. They've got the energy as Mario's gonna keep on pushing up this ramp. Now almost a third well, for a moment almost a 40 army supply lead back to 30, but Mario's just gonna keep on going. Oh. Now one look against multiple transfusions will stay alive as Mario keeps his marauders alive and this fight keeps on going, ZG. This tug of war is going to continue. Mario is not gonna let this go. He has put himself on a creep and he's not able to actually oh. clear it up. The wood of mines actually firing back on some of his own armies, rogue. Tries again to use Queens as that defense. It feels like it was the same scenario 10 minutes ago, but this time around there's Ling Bailing and a hero lurker, if you will, trying to save the day. Eventually, Morrow pulls back off of that creep, brings a Liberator forward, though, and continues to rally forward with everything that he's got. One lurker again, the hero lurker. Save the lurker, save the world. <laughs> oh my god, one plus three carapace as well, so some upgrades catching up a bit for Rogue. Widowmine gets a cancel on one of the lurkers that was morphing in, so... That's a little bit of something gonna burrow, uh, sorry, he's burrow for Widowmine Siege up this Liberator here. We die for a look, but again, the transfusions are good. Widowmines need to connect here. They do get a good little bit of Ling Bane. Marauders are tanking the Banelings. That does give you space to get rid of the Liberator, but Rogue is still fighting from so far behind in the army supply. He's trying to get more Lurkers, trying to stabilize, but Mario's also taking more bases because he's had zero pressure for the last two minutes on his side of the map. Yeah, this is all of them, but Rogue's defense, which is getting a little bit scary every passing moment. He does have some upgrades finishing that, for example, Ample plus three carapace finish during one of these engagements. Plus three attack also going to finish apparently before Maro can actually seal the deal on this game. He pulls back for once uh, pretty far back, giving Rogue a lot of time to breathe. There's the upgrade. There's Rogue, I guess, in person also being able to say, okay, things calm down. Let's rebuild. Let's get the creep back out there. I will say one thing that's been happening is besides Maru getting to another base, and that's very good for Maru, is that it was so much about the tug of war. Rogue at least has been on these five bases uninterrupted, and he's even grabbing a sixth now that he can finally do so. Ghost Academy is now on the way. If Maru can continue up the pressure and get to Ghosts, I think we all know what that actually means. Even if he wasn't in a good spot, his control of the late game TVZ has been amazing this yeah. season final. He's going to pick up and get out of here before he gets too cornered. But Rogue, yeah, down 50 supply, dealing with harassment, trying desperately to hold on to very important mining bases. If he takes perfect trades, then I believe it. But even if we we're to do that, Ghosts are going to be the next problem. Rogue even is going to get supply blocked if he keeps losing overlords to these Vikings. So he needs to sort that out. I mean, you don't really want to be rebuilding overlords when your opponent doesn't have to keep on rebuilding supply depots. As this is a dead base. We're going to lift up and just save a few of these units as well. And again, efficiency has got to be the name of this game at this point. We are Nidusing around the map and we are going to try Nidus into the main as well once more. The Vikings are here to get rid of the overlord, but are they just going to land initially and deal with the Nidus? Looks like that is the plan. Marine Force Marine as we find this Nidus down over here again. What about the Nidus in the main base? It gets up for the slightest of seconds. Nothing major, and that is going to be that Overlord dead as well, as Rogue has tried everything to keep him pulling Maru out of position. But Maru has been really impeccable, just continuing to control this army in what has been a, a crazy game, as we finally just lift up here and evacuate. this low ground going to be annoying once more, but Maru is taking steps towards being able to deal with this.
Yes. It's no longer a case of if the Lurker's going to cross the map in a choke. Maro's in a very desperate situation. He takes it calmly. Again, something we've seen already. He's not going to panic. He's not going to overinvest into a defense unless he absolutely has to. He'll just bring his ghost forward and eventually make the Lurkers, in fact, run away. So Rogue doesn't have that objective anymore. The objective is to actually get a, a foundation out of the economy and get to a max up situation and then play around a bit more back and forth. But oh, now what? again on the defensive, there's just so much more Maru. He's pushed back temporarily, but the snipes are going to start coming down. Well, Maru lost like 15, 20 supply in the top left, like a bunch okay. of lurkers just hit his bio. That was just stood AFK. But yeah, with the snipes here, this is going to be worse for Rogue than it's been in a long, long time. And you can just see sniping a lurker that's morphing. Rogue actually looks like he wants to try and collapse on this, maybe not give these ghosts a chance. There are going to be a wood online or two here. They both get cleaned out. I mean, you do see just one lurker left behind to deal some damage. Rogue catches up in supply for the first time in a while, denying the mine and getting a decent little pick off with a couple lurkers. Definitely helping. And got to remember as well, at this point, a lot of the other bases of Maru are going to be mining out. So he really needs to get to a point where, you know, he needs another base and he's got to float a natural orbital probably to the bottom right corner or so. That's true. Every time Maru takes a base in this game, it's not going to be protected by a planetary with full upgrades or two other planetaries beside it and some of these other more passive TVZs. Now he's taking his naturals, his mains, his orbitals and putting them into a very vulnerable situation if Rogue can actually afford to send over some lings anyways, which he's uh, been focused on regaining a lurker count. He is back up to 12, trying to get the Snidus from stuff to work, has not so far, but looks like there was at least one new command center made, so that will be a planetary. But that said, planetaries only hold against lurkers so much, so if Rogue could get Novalor down there, pop out a couple of lurkers, that could be destroyed before the ghosts even respond. Yeah, well, Rogue has actually had like a good amount of bases all this time. He has starting to actually run out a little bit of economy. The economy's evening up a little bit because I imagine Maru taking a new base, plus the fact that Rogue's also mining out himself. It's also not a high work account, right? Only 56 drones here. It's definitely pretty notable as Maru's been rocking like a 30-plus army supply lead for like almost 10 minutes straight in this game now, which is kind of ridiculous to think about that Rogue has been able to hold that off so many times at this point. Yes, yes it is. Just with how back and forth this game has been, if you look at the resources lost, it's supposed, I suppose it's pretty much a TVZ, but just the rest of this 25-minute game, right? Just means at one point, <laughs> uh, Rogue probably should have lost, but instead he has gotten to this funky little point here. He's about to be detected. But he did scout the bottom right with an Overlord, so that might be a point of attack a bit later on. <laughs> there we go. Um, and then... Uh, he's actually expanding over to the left side as well. I think the real question is going to come down to how effective is Maru again with these ghosts. He's only lost in this entire tournament. I'm going to say in the season of finals, all games that Maru has played, it's like 10 ghosts max, something like that. So it's pretty insane. Yeah, his ghost control has been pretty ridiculous. And I do imagine here yeah, it's going to be the issue for Ro because there's a reason Maru's slowing down the game. He knows that he's comfortable if he lets these ghosts get up and he's at the point where he can afford to. Look at this, two more CCs coming down. This is what Mario loves to do at the 12 minute marker. It's just been such a crazy game that he couldn't. Right. And now he gets the chance to, he's like, okay, then let's go. Let's start splitting this map. I'm gonna take my base by base. You do what you wanna do, and I'm just gonna snipe you down, trade extremely efficiently. Yeah, and it's not like Rogue didn't try to <laughs> not let this happen. It's just the inevitable outcome is he has been the one barely defending more often. Now that things have calmed down, Rogue now has to worry about the situation that is defeating Maru late game. You know, mm -hmm. if I couldn't do it in a super even game, even one that I'm ahead, and I can't I do it when I've actually been behind? Maybe Rogue's getting one of his few chances recently to actually do this. It was Dark and Serral who would falter against it previously. Maybe Rogue can show the way. Does take out a couple of SCVs off to that left side, but we are at that point where there's so many extra command centers that's not really too important. Yeah, there's, there's bases to replace SCVs right now. Uh, economy is not what it was 10 minutes ago when it was scrappy and dangerous and back and forth. It's a much safer situation right here as Enhanced Shockwave comes through. A couple of Liberators are going to be finishing, and Mara really is. I love the Liberators too, right? Because it's not like Rogue has had the luxury of having Lurkers and a lot of Hydras. So I kind of like the couple of Libs, maybe Harass, but even just having with them army is just going to make it expensive to trade against them. Of course, Rogue does have Hydra, Lurker, and Viper, so he does have answers, but I feel like I like what it does in terms of forcing the issue. I'm not surprised that Rogue is getting plus three melee, but doesn't got into a Juno Glance. We forgot about it or not. But yeah, uh, it's definitely a mistake. Yeah. Maybe he thought he had it after he melted those 15 SCVs exactly. early in the game, pre hive. <laughs> He's like, wow, I can get this on lair? I really am special. <laughs> <laughs> My Link's just auto upgraded this game? Cool, I'll take it. Yeah. 
Uh, but that would be a bit more effective. It's been so... The first 10 minutes had a decent number of Ling run buys, but so much more of this game has been Ken Lurkers getting to in a really abusive position. Can the Nettis from actually pop up? But absolutely. If the Nettis from pops up to the main, there's Adrenal 3-3 three, three Ling. It's like, oh, it's going to tear through everything. It's a big hit, though. Maro has also, at the same time, not lost when he goes. He's also denied every Nidus Worm that's been attempted to, to actually knock him for a loop. He's been very foolproof against that. This is a bit too much for that particular army to hold on to, but more reinforcements have arrived. And that left side is not as vulnerable as it would seem. Actually, it's become increasingly less important to guard. All the minerals are gone. Yeah, we have what, like... Okay, there's still like two and a half thousand gas on those refineries, but... Yeah, gas is not the biggest problem, I would say, for Maru, or running out of gas to mine from, so... Maybe something you worry about later when you think about holding the 9 o'clock base as these ghosts are continuing to fight on their own. I'm a little worried for them, but they are doing okay for the moment and scanning up to that high ground again. A few lings come in and they get denied pretty quickly. I was, uh, I was, I was really worried that these ghosts were in more trouble. Yeah, a couple of effects would have helped out. Yeah, I would have liked it. Maybe a little bit. He's got enough. Yeah, <laughs> yes, he does. Uh, loses two ghosts, but eventually, I mean, he did get a lot of snipes down over there, actually. So we also have a nuke which so far Maru has gotten... Oh, he canceled it, actually. Never mind. I'm, gonna, I'm still going to say it. Maru's gotten one nuke in all these super late-game situations. Oh, there it is. Because he's using it. Um, I, do, I do like the bailings, by the way. I feel like it's something that we didn't see Doc use enough when he got to this sort of stage of the game. It was something that Serral used very well, and with this amount of ghosts, I think bailings are just a necessity because you need something that can really scare the ghosts into actually running away. And Bailings definitely do that as Maru just kind of leaves this position for a little while and now he's completely out of position and this base is just going to die. I feel like he didn't think the rogue was going yeah. to do that. <laughs> like, no oh, way. You, you did push into me. Oh, my bad, my bad. Uh, that's a bit awkward. He loses that frontline defense. The planetary is so helpful in guarding it, especially the Link Bailing, with something that you've been bringing up. The Bailings are a real threat. It's <laughs> In this situation, oh, what am I? Just took down a ton of them. In this situation, the ghosts have to run away. Usually they can tank a fair few, but when it's the entire might of the Zerg army, the Bi army's got to respect that. 20 SCDs go down, the planetary went down, some revenge snipes towards the end, but not a bad attack overall for Rogue. It is the one that makes you question the resource loss trade. Still heavily in favor of Mario. Yeah, but of course he's not manning the bases that Rogue is right now. There's all oh, look a man! Ah, Mario doesn't realize that he just saves at the end. I mean, Honestly, a base is important, right? Like an orbital especially is going to have just not very many lurkers here, so they are going to start getting sniped down. This base in trouble for Rogue. And that's kind of a big deal. It's not like Rogue has a ton of workers either, so even just losing a few could be problematic. These lings are just trailing in on their own. So 34 ban lings morphing. My worry here is that it's just going to be kind of ling bane, but I suppose that maybe works to some extent against these ghosts. We will see. There's not going to be as much of a lurker threat anymore, though, so that's something to keep in mind as these fights continue. It is kind of the funny thing that can happen when it comes down to these mass ghost armies is that, yes, technically a ghost for a, how many banelings it takes, it takes to actually kill them, quite a few, but ghosts are going to clump. And if there's 20 links holding them in place and 20 banelings crashing into them, then suddenly the ghosts can also struggle against that particular army. They are absolutely best in a situation where it can just draw a line in the sand and take down lurkers one by one with snipes. The overwhelming just quantity of a Zerg army can be tough, but this is a nice concave. These are nice splits. Rogue actually investing way too much into this push to grab a command center that ultimately does not matter so much for Maru. Might have just killed him. Yeah, I mean, he just... He doesn't have the army supply to, to fight now. He doesn't have the bank to rebuild it either. I mean, it's been an issue for a long time, right? Getting into this spot where Maru has just always had more army. You know, if you look at the army grab, it's been ridiculous. But this takes it to a whole new level. Uh, it's just going to be almost impossible, I imagine, for Rogue to take a proper fight now. And he goes into 10 Lurkers again, but the problem is it's always like picking and choosing. It's like, okay, this time I'm going to go Lurkers. But as he goes Lurkers, he now has no Banelings, and we know how that works out against right. a Maru who still has 14 ghosts on the map. In the right hands, this late game composition can look absolutely brutal. Like, you know, Zerg's looking at this situation and saying, what the heck does Rogue do? And some other people will point out that Rogue was not in a good space for so much of this game. And it's <laughs> yeah. a fair point, absolutely. But then we look at the other examples of the Zergs. There's really only been one Zerg. Serral has been able to take him down. Uh, Rogue having the same troubles that Dark did when it comes to the late game. Does take down more ghosts than he did. In total, 15 ghosts have died. But the exchange, 41 lurkers. And a couple of the last snipes go down. While the attack to the right, Mara attacks to the left. Takes down a very important mining base. And I think we know this is going to go, Wardy. 
Yeah, Mario's just gonna have too much. He's gonna continue on sniping here. These overseers getting chased away, even a Viking helping out with that. And of course, the army on the left side is just not being stopped, so Rogue has to type out GG. Well, as a starport comes through, Ling's just gonna go nibble and uh, work their way through some rocks here. We'll see what Maru does this time, as the starport is about to be done. He's building singular marines. I mean, I almost want to say we're about to see the armory yeah. coming down, and we're going to help at it up. Let's find out. As these marines show up, Rogue needs to start building units. He's waiting on overlords. I mean, he's not quite supply block. He starts one more queen. Now he starts up some links. He's going to lose this overlord. That's all he can build for the moment. So, Rogue, what we're going to do, you're going to have to buy a lot of time by... Basically kiting with these queens, they're in a good spread to start out with. They get some good damage on the medevac right away, so that's a good start. As the lings try and come in, they'll get turned around pretty quickly, and Maru is up this ramp and dealing decent starting damage. Two queens already in trouble. I will say that Maru got far closer to the hatchery, the real scary point of the push, than I expected. But Rogue had that nice concave of queens, did pull a couple of the weak ones back. And Mara wasn't able to snowball or even quite reach those drones, even though he got a bit close. And this has got to be something that Mara was uh, willing to accept could happen, that this wasn't going to kill all that much. Mm -hmm. Two queens, an overlord, and 20 lings means that technically it's a better trade for him, I guess. But. Yeah, I mean, I don't hate it. When you look at, like, the value of the trade, it's actually okay. Yeah. But look at everything else, right? He's rebuilt a bunch of Hellions. That slows down your barracks production. And rebuilding your back barrel and building your barracks later, everything else in this game slows down. He's got the cloak banshees too. Yeah, it, it's weird because it's like it feels like the Hellions put you in an advantage but in such a minor way, and it's like, oh, I've got to make up for the ones I've lost, and then you're back being behind. It's uh, yeah, it's difficult sometimes to see the value of the Hellbats as we do see a Hellion's going to go running around the top side. Mauro has got his third CC about to finish back at home, and now he is on his way to the extra barracks, the extra engineering base, setting up for the mid-game as the lair will be done soon from Rogue, and do we see a Spire? He is taking all of his gases. I think so. No evolution chambers. Bailey now is going to keep him safe. He's going to be able to start up some difficult hooks, but there is the Spire as the lair finishes. I am... Um feeling good about this, but again, it's just more of a personal bias, but especially if Maro is unable to quite scalp this out, and the Mutas are allowed to go to the middle of the map, but Maro is going to dive pretty deep with the Banshees. Not close oh. enough to the top right, not yet anyways, but they're getting ever close. They're going to grab a couple of drones, head towards the north, and there's the scout. Yeah, as long as he definitely recognizes it, which we'd expect Matt Maru does, but only gets four drones. Uh, I mean, he did pull Queens out of position. Nice on the fly split there on the Hellbats, and he will actually walk away with four of the five alive. So didn't quite get into the mineral line, but it was able to kind of put on a bit of pressure, trade out for some Banes. Not terrible. Mm. Here come our Mutalisks down to the bottom side of the map, ready to make a play in toward that main base. There is already one missile turret up on the edge, one in the mineral line. Plenty of time to respond here as Maru is... If my combat shields, well, it's probably the most exposed thing, but Rogue ain't gonna go for it. He's gonna go a little bit deeper here, and Maru can start splitting between main and natural with these ah. Marines. Yeah, you lose a few SCVs, but really not that bad. Yeah, it's kind of, kind of funny how that works out. You know, the Terran players, similar to, I guess, a Zerg player, and ZVP will skip the middle missile turrets, and Rogue was like, I think he skipped it. So he does grab a couple of SCVs, but. Nothing huge. Loses a muta in the process, too, so that's quite expensive for him. But he's applied that pressure over to Maru. Now, Maru handles this really nicely. Well, at the end of the day, he was already prepared. He doesn't get shocked. He's not having his army on the other side of the map that's not being paid attention to, and then he gets killed. That's the worst-case scenario. Best-case scenario is kind of this one, which is that he already has the mutas under control. But Rogue has the ability to spread the creep, get the drones, get the bases, get the upgrades and hopefully take a decent fight through the middle, because one thing, of course, that he does not have going for him are upgrades. Right to this bench, you find a few extra drones. This is really nice, just a little bit of final damage before you go down, you get five workers. Will not complain about that. As yeah, Maru not skipping a beat on his upgrades, getting that drilling claws up. And of course, we'll see how this goes. I love the burrow. I think the burrow, remember last game, we didn't see a lot of it later on, but early initially, it really did help Rogue out in a lot of key moments. They are pretty awesome for the first 10 minutes of that game, 15 minutes of that game. But as the game got more hectic, and as I think there was also just, I mean, more things to do, but also more scans available for Maru, it just became something that Rogue didn't think would be worth it or wanted to pay attention to. But here, there's a couple of really obvious places to put Banelings through the attack paths. There's basically three of them on this map, south, center, and north. But, uh, also plant them aggressively. If you actually get Maru to play a super defensive game, you can place the Broad Banelings a little bit far forward. 
We'd love to see that as well. Right now, Rogue seems to be doing just kind of cleanup work. He's making sure that this map is good for him, I guess, as far as the future goes. So Rock's being cleaned up. Hive is on the way. And I guess we're going to see at least one big mid-game lair-based army from the Zerg. Lots of Banelings just got morphed, but sights are set on the Hive. Yes, I definitely feel, I mean, obviously, he's just going to be having everything set up. He's got a ton of drones, all of his bases. He is going to try and take that 12 o'clock as well already to try and get the bases mining over Maru. That's obviously the issue on this map in general. If one player can get the top or bottom bases and the other does not, it generally becomes a little bit unfair. Nice unbarrel rebarrel there eventually. Is the what do mines do? Actually hit the bio units as well. Let me see a few ghosts showed up. Ghosts are amazing against Lings, so yeah, just are. Lings there. There's... Uh, those things have to turn around. They're scared of the ghosts and Maru. Well, at least he has ghosts because obviously some snipes will be nice here. He's also getting the tanks up to try and hold positions just like this one. Maru is really locking up his bases nice and tight. We even got missile turrets every which way we look, including in the main base with the center tower. <laughs> to be aware of any, well, incoming Yudas, yes, but also any incoming overlords are going to try and slap down a sneaky Nidus Worm, which so many players have tried to do and been very unsuccessful so far. There's one of them, which should be very much in Maru's sights, but he's also handling the defense, pulling back the ghost, migrating, and not actually excessively well. There's a lot of bio got taken down there. It looks like the Nettersworm was being paid attention to. Uh, well, how I count Maru, I don't even know. But he did take kind of a nasty loss on the front lines. 21 SCVs, yeah. ghost not in position that hurts. quite yet, and a maxed out rogue still ready to go. Once again, going to dive off creep, but this one make a little more sense. What does Mara actually have? Well, he's got a ton of SimCity. His ghosts are going to split and actually soak up a ton of these Banelings, but more SCDs will go down. 37 in total as Rogue now has a 50 supply lead. Yeah, SCVs are the biggest issue. I feel like the armies are doing fine for Maru, but he needs his SCVs, otherwise he can't keep rebuilding off this while Rogue has money to spend. That command sender just gets an <laughs> SCV on it to save it. And that's critical in a moment where you may just need an extra base to rebuild some SCVs off of. It just speeds up that process, so... Yeah, Rogue just keeps on going, and he really is just not trading well, as we know he shouldn't be, but he's tra uh, he's mining enough. You know, it's good enough on the income graph. Right. It's massively in his favor, and that's where Maru just doesn't seem to be making any progress at all because he's fully sat back, and so Rogue is happy to take the chance to just throw units at him. That's what's missing from some of these other games, is the income graph wasn't as so one-sided for Rogue, but now it absolutely is. One would have mind digging a beautiful shot and some links to the top left, but still enough of them going to be taking on this planetary, which can't be repaired because Maru's trying to micro in multiple places at once. So the planetary does go down. Other command center will replace it very quickly, but Maru is not able to stabilize. He's not actually getting to a good 150, I would say, is a point where you start to feel a little more confident. He's been trapped just under that supply, still with a decent number of ghosts, yes, but not a whole lot to cover those ghosts. And ghosts alone can only do so much. Yeah, ghosts can only do so much, and that's the issue. It's, uh, it feels like Maru just never quite gone to his full late game, right? Like, Rogue hit, and he hit a lot of the economy, especially just before Maru was really able to get comfortable. And so then Maru can't quite rebuild for the, you know, even though he's trading well, he just doesn't have any rebuild, where Rogue has all the rebuild available to him. And a couple more tanks going down now as well. Okay, only one of them goes down, but again, Rogue is holding the dominant position in this game. He's got bases mine on the top side of the map as well. And he should, at some point here, overwhelm Maru because there's just no staying in this with this amount of Banelings morphing in and the Lurker support. Yeah, Maru just can't get any minerals. His income is absolutely garbage. Another great what am I shot. And not enough to make up for the differences. Rogue just he had a handle on this game in such a good way that it was almost deceiving. You looked at it and you said, it's not bad for either player, right? And then all of a sudden, Rogue's decision-making, his aggression was always the right call. It always kept Maru under his thumb. Maru was suppressed for far too long in this game. And eventually, the 20 deficit, the 30 deficit became a 50, 60, now almost 80 supply deficit. And Rogue is just going to easy peasy walk his way to a victory, at least in this game. Finally put another point on the board. It'll eventually happen. And I'm a little surprised. I don't know what Maru's thinking he's going to try and do here, but he's really hoping that I guess Rogue over commits to a deadly trade. It's not happened quite so yet. Yeah, maybe like overbuilds lurkers and doesn't build any banelings or something. It sounds crazy, but sometimes it happens, right? But this game, Rogue is on point. He's going to clear out the SCVs again. That's such an important part of this. Just constantly the SCV count of Maru taking hit after hit. His economy has not been comparable to Rogue's for a very, very long time. And that is especially where Rogue has just taken advantage after advantage in this game. 
70, I mean 100 new links just on production straight away. Rogue still has a bank, he's still mining off 94 drones. Morphing them into Bane lanes and just getting ready to go again, but you will not even need to. This game sets up into just pretty kind of the same as before, right? Where it's just gonna be this double gas stop. Or we didn't we not ask for like a single game of 3cc and we I haven't had it? Would have bet I yeah at I, least five dollars on it. I, I would have bet more than five dollars, EG. <laughs> it was I'm shocked that we've not seen it still. <laughs> Alright, the game will move on. We'll move on. Yeah. The lack of Hellens can be scary for a Terran player, especially if they don't really believe in their micro, but of course Maru does. Um, but you know the Banshees can kind of help cover at least at least in actually helping against a Ling Flood, but then also in scouting it too, so you don't make a mistake, like sending four Marines over to protect your third CC. Uh, and as for Rogue, I mean, blip in his economy. A bit annoying, but he'll get over it. More annoying would be to lose more drones to a Banshee and then not actually kill it. That's, yep. that's the real, it's the real like, ah, oh, gosh, darn it. The amount of dead space in the top right. Cause you know, a second Banshee's also on the way and could grab a good two or three other kills. Yeah, we're going to bring this one around. Spores well placed, but obviously you can just sit here and still get, like you said, kill, maybe two. It's one of those things that's just so annoying about Banshees. That's why the Banshees are so good, because there are just going to be openings where they get in. Yeah, they'll take some damage as they do it, but they can leave in the end, get repaired, and go again. Hellions now going to try and make a play, but the Lings are here, and this is probably the end of the Hellions, as these Lings probably could have committed. They decide not to, not worth it, but... Yeah, a risky moment for those Hellions as it's a Spire once again. So back to the Mutas for Rogue. Now I think it is more of a question of how does Maru play out the mid game? So he was, he got to a certain decent point last map, but then he really did not apply a whole ton of pressure. It was the Hellbat build, then the rest of the game, which did not go favorably for him. Now, without the Hellbat build, he can do a little bit more push and pull. And has to be careful about how the Mutas are going to be handled. Don't, doesn't want to overcommit and then lose everything. But I think there's going to be a bit more of that. And we can already see things are getting a little awkward as the Mutas were... I mean, they're they're not hitting at the same time that Maru is, and they're going to be handling Missile Turret, so they might not do a whole lot of damage, although with Lings, could be a bit of a different scenario. It still isn't a ton of Zerglings, but it's enough. Maru caught with a very awkward timing on his production, but he is grabbing a base. He's getting a mass repair on the Missile Turret as yeah. well. As two Banshees help clear out the Lings, this could have been so much worse about those two things. A Missile Turret and two Banshees, and now Rogue, can he hold back at home? Wood of Mines are burrowed, not really even having to get their shots as the Marines tear down the Banelings, the very limited number of Banelings that Rogue has. He's at five right now, not rebuilding anymore, and it looks like Maru is not going to, I guess, go for it. He knows he was on creep, he knows that everything's coming back home, so he repositions and now plants down his Wood of Mines. That was a little feisty for a second. That was very exciting, and now Maru's got his reinforcements showing up. Rogue supply block as he loses out on an Overlord. He could have lost one more to the left side as well, so he's a little fortunate there, but never mind that right now, because these Banes are rolling through. Widowmine does not go off. Okay, it does, but it doesn't hit anything, because it's all dead already. Maru stimmed one more time, but pushing up this narrow ramp is going to be tough. But he does have that 1-1 one, one upgrade lead, and that's going to be the problem of having gone for the Muters, and the Muters not really having done enough to keep Maru at home. Here we go again, Widowmine's... Not quite getting the Banes one shot onto the Mutas. Maru keep working this position, and he's looking good, ZG. He is. He is the Banely number is very concerning. So only at seven with three more on the way. Upright's only just started for the Zerg player. And the Banelings roll in single file, as Maru does still have enough Marines to, I guess, fight back very quickly. Rogue is holding, but it feels like it's a... I don't know if it's a temporary hold. It's not a best, the best hold ever, is it? He still doesn't have upgrades. His yeah. units aren't doing damage. And he still has Maru on his side of the map, something that he really does not want to deal with. He wants to have something else happening, and he just can't. It's all about the defense. And as he pushes mine. this oh. back, ah, oh, good split there at the last second. Maybe finally he can actually send Maru packing. Yep, and he's actually going to get a medevac that's low HP with all the units inside as well. So Maru, he's going to lose all of his medevacs here. Rogue finally finds the defense, and... Wow, Maru just didn't get a single good mine shot, right? Like, no, every didn't. Widow Mine went off on one Ling. Good splits from Rogue. I thought one was going to go on the Banes, but they did not. And that was necessary for Rogue, because if he takes one bad mine shot, Maru turns, fights, and it's a completely different scenario. Four Medivacs are still alive. Yeah, now Rogue keeps himself in this game, so we'll still have a lot of upgrade problems this game. I mean, he's going to be 0-0 zero, zero against 2-2 two, two for a few seconds, but that means he's going to be on 1-1 one, one against 2-2 two, two for a very long time. Right. And it's not like his economy is really that great either. Nope. He is up on a couple of bases. That's nice, but the drone count isn't there. So 
this is still a problem. Like, Rogue still had to spend a lot to defend, and Mario is just right back to it. He's in a very comfortable position, going to be planning on his fourth base, getting all his production, adding on 3-3 as well, which is going to be a real killer for Rogue to deal with. Rogue needs something else to happen. He needs the Mutas to start taking some decent fights, finding an SCV line that's a bit too vulnerable, something along those lines. And I would absolutely love to see Burrow again, but it looks like he's been... Uh, he maybe give up on that a little bit. Could be effective on this map, but not thinking about it now. Yeah, I think this is one of those situations, right, where Maru can kind of look at this and say, you know what, like, this is good for me, but Rogue has also got a bit of momentum back because he's got the meters on the other side. He's able to harass me. So Maru just says, right, I'll settle down on my fourth base. I just hope he doesn't settle down for too long because that's something that Maru has done in this event, right? Sometimes just settles down into the late game when maybe keeping up the pressure is the better way to go about it. We'll see what happens as right now he is on the defense. SCVs are going down as Mutas and Lings will strike 13 workers so far as the Mutas are trying to find themselves a way out of this corner. And they're going to do so by finding another medevac. Nelly two, but definitely these Marines. Yeah, this is pretty good. They're able to run by and avoid some heavy losses. Only four Mutas have gone down in this game. But for a decent amount of trades and a lot of chaos as well. That's a good point. As much as I feel confident in Maru's late game, I guess it's more of a Maru late game where things are going okay and there's a little bit more back and forth. Uh, the last game, the one we saw in Blackburn, was not uh, not so good for him. And then there's you know sterile interview saying, oh, I guess he wasn't really aggressive enough. That might have been a problem. Maybe Rogue is hoping to uh, abuse the same problem. Wants Maru to actually just sit back and let him take this humongous map. Seems to be kind of happening right now, but remember that Maru's going to have at least one big push soon. 3-3, three, three, maxed out. We'll see how Rogue handles that. Yeah, there's going to be definitely a little bit of a transition period here for Rogue where he's going to struggle a little bit, right? The Hive's on the way, but still a ways off. Upgrades are going to be massively in favor of Maru, so he does have timings. He's going to be maxed. There's not really any reason for Maru to hold back apart from making sure he's not taking damage as these Marines are running to intercept the Muters. Gets one and a little bit of damage done to another. Now they're going to head into the main base. Before Maru, last game, had good Marine uh, position in the main, but this time, nothing. So, massive stim back. And this is exactly what you need here as Rogue. You need to be getting into these bases and forcing Maru back home, not letting him ever across the map. Yes, but I'm worried that Maru's okay with that little tiny delay because he is just now getting everything lined up. So he could still absolutely do a push. It's very, very brutal. Rogue does not have that hive technology. Even as it finishes, he's not going to have a lot with it. Not going to have Lurkers, Ultras, maybe Vipers, but then he also has to get the energy on them. So it's still a complicated place for Rogue to find himself still down on his last life. Maru's going to do the push. He's chosen his attack path, and he's continuing to add on command centers behind oh. him. That's 32, oh, 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 oh. Banelings morph, and at least the Widowmine here will soften the counterattack from Rogue. Oh, wow. In fact, it will do a lot against the counterattack. Rogue has just turned away already. Now, let's see what these Banelings can do. As Maru's starting to split, he's just letting the Marauders tank. The Marines are going to run around off creep, and that's beautiful. Maru gets rid of so many Banelings, still has an army here. Now his reinforcements show up, and Rogue has five Banelings on the map, Zombie Grub. He is in trouble, as Maru is going to find the five of them right there as well if he wants to go. Rogue, he's got an Ultra Cavern coming up, but long way from having those actually going here. Focusing on these Muters on the other side, but right now they are not doing enough, and Maru is up 60 Army Supply, pushing into Rogue's bases. I think this is it. You said that it was do or die here for Maru, and he has chosen to actually go ahead and win this game, win the Season Finals right here, right now. Rogue down 60 Supply with his last few Banelings rolling into just a couple of Marauders as Maru pulls back with ease. This is it. Maru's deep into Rogue's territory, into the natural, on top of all of his reinforcement points. And there you have it. Maru is going to take the 4-2 victory to win a season finals. Not just for him, I suppose, but also for Korea. You can now officially list it. Of course, one of them had to, but Maru.